Our next guest is a comedian, writer, and a free leader. <laughs> connection. Um, anyway, she performs all over the city, but you may have seen her on Check Please, which means she is Chicago famous now. <laughs> she is the founding writer of Drinkers with Writing Problems, cast member of the Cates, founder of the Windy City Rollers, and possibly the reason your parents broke up. <laughs> Catch her next at the Chicago Women's Funny Festival and also give her some sympathy. She had the worst Divi experience I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> um, please put your hands together for Elizabeth Gomez. from a long night of scrolling on Facebook. I curse my contacts and I wonder why I haven't committed to LASIK surgery. Then again, if my eyes are primarily being used for Facebook, which is often the case, I realize I deserve nothing. <laughs> my dry, jerky lenses land on a post where a white dude makes some kind of hippy, dippy, stupid ass comment about how we're all the same, man. If, it, if we set aside our differences, our race, our gender, our sexual or orientation, that deep inside, we are just people. A rage swells inside of me as I think to myself, eat a bag of dicks, you fuck face! <laughs> Immediately, I imagine engaging in a game of, of Thrones verbal spar, starting with my declaration of my family name, which would quickly inform my opponent of what he was up against. Though Gomez probably would be more confusing than helpful since it's a Latino version of Smith. <laughs> Which Gomez? <laughs> Gomez? Gomez of Westeros? Gomez of Winterfell? Dorne? East or West? Are you one of the Gomez's just south of Ashland? Because there's about six of them right there alone. <laughs> anyway, I try to come up with a quick quip to cut him down faster than a Tyrion slap to Joffrey's face. I want to scream that the idea of sameness is disgusting and false. Sure. We all eat shit and die. <laughs> but the idea that we are constantly connected by our humanity is actually crap. The fact that we bleed the same color does not stop police from killing black men. The fact that we all have mothers does not stop rapists from raping. The fact that we all need love does not stop dickheads from beating gay and trans people to death. This idea is bullshit. It is only those who are not confronted daily about what they are or aren't that can imagine a scenario where one could just shed the color of their skin or their body parts like a Barbie and Ken dream world. And let's be real, a dream world like that would be no fun because there's no finger banging. <laughs> Barbie and Ken not only lack the genitalia, but they also lack the flexibilities in their hands to enjoy such pleasures. <laughs> those who are cloaked in the privilege of whiteness that can think that this is so simple. And I will be real. I may be Korean and Puerto Rican, at, I, may, I may be Korean and Puerto Rican, but at the heart of it, I'm really white. I love all things white. I love NPR, I love Taylor Swift, I love Tom's, I love Starbucks, I love Target, I love Starbucks in Target. <laughs> But as much as I love white culture, I will never be white because no one will ever let me forget that I'm brown. I was reminded of this at five years old, sitting in a grocery cart alone, when my mom went to retrieve a box of Frosted Flakes. Two white women approached my cart, and they ran their hair down my long, straight black hair, wondering where I was from. When I started crying, my mother ran back toward me, shooing them away, and then they scurried along, whispering about how rude my mother was. <laughs> Then there was a time I, sat, I spent sitting on the stairs of my high school when a woman approached me and she asked me, what are you? When I replied that I was Korean and Puerto Rican, she then spent 20 minutes trying to convince me that I shouldn't be ashamed of my blackness, <laughs> which I am not. <laughs> if we speed it up to my adult life, we can discuss the following. The number of times I've been asked if I like eating dogs, how, much, how many grown men have called me China girl and gook and asked me to love them long time even though I'm only 13? When someone was obsessed with putting notes in my high school locker for weeks saying that I was an end lover and that Puerto Ricans were great babies from Spaniards assaulting African women. The number of dudes who fetishized me because of my racial makeup and said I would probably be spicy in bed, 
not knowing how dead-eyed and disinterested I could also be. <laughs> the day when a man claimed that my people owed him a rooster because his died in a cockfight in Puerto Rico. When he realized that I was mixed race, he offered to pay me to be a ring girl at a boxing match where I could wear a bikini because guys were really gonna like my unusual shape. He even offered to pay me more because he thought I looked Hawaiian. What exactly? It doesn't even make any sense. And did I mention that this happened while I was at work? And how every single day of my 43 years, someone is always asking me what I am or where I'm from. And regardless of these acts of microaggressions, I have learned to love what I am. And believe me, in white America, I had to learn to love it. I love the yellowy tone in my brown skin against my black frizzy hair. I love the fact that I can't decide whether Koreans are really brown people because they're kind of pale. <laughs> I even love it when someone calls me China girl, which always makes me laugh because why are they doing that? <laughs> and maybe I'm splitting hairs here, but I would like to argue that prioritizing acceptance of diversity to allow people to be free and not oppressed in their differences seems more important to me than categorizing everyone as the same. Let's celebrate our histories and culture rather than trying to force everyone into one boring-ass homogenized society. Think about it. If we didn't learn from each other's differences and help each other meet, help meet each other's needs, we wouldn't have things like Tex-Mex or white people eating kimchi on hot dogs, which I'm not sure I'm okay with, but okay. My eyes blink faster and harder as they try to grab any moisture on my contacts, and I imagine mustering up the inner my inner Tyrion and writing, eat a big bag of poo, serve with caviar, <laughs> sir. <laughs> And I think about white dudes sitting behind the computer, giving himself a self-congratulatory pat on the back for solving all the problems concerning race in that one post today. He's probably shoveling a spoonful of free trade organic grain-free granola to his mouth and smiling. When it hits me, just as I can't separate my race from the color lens of how I see the world, neither can he. So fine, I'll leave him be for today, but next time, I won't let him off so easy. Mm -hmm. Thank you.